What's up, my fellow developers, and welcome back to the Dev Shop. Welcome to episode four of Daily O3DE. First and foremost, let me say I know I've been away for the better part of three weeks, almost a month. And I do apologize. I was uh, very, very ill uh, for the most part. You coupled that in with work. Uh, some of my other family in the house got ill. In case you're wondering, I can't say for sure if it was or was not COVID related. But I'm just thankful that we all recovered. I am a little bummed out because my sickness did affect my participation uh, with O3D Con. Um, so I'm a little bummed out about that. Uh, hopefully there's next year. But I was really looking forward to participating and being a part of the first one. And, you know, timing just sucks sometimes. But we are back. Uh, we are back with the videos. We have a lot to get to. I have a lot to catch up on. So let's get right into it. So as you guys know, the team is working hard daily on the engine. I haven't really updated mine in a while. So if I was to show a screenshot here, you'll see how far behind I am in commits. As far as terrain updates, there have been a few uh, within the last four weeks. Mike B, the team over there on the terrain, terrain team has been putting in a lot of work. I believe uh, one of the newer components is the axis aligned box shape so according to mike some systems like terrain use a box shape to describe the region of the world that the components affect uh, with those systems i like terrain impose a world aligned grid it's easier to stay within the limitations by enforcing the requirement that a non-rotatable box is used also terrain now supports uh, layer priorities uh, so that's cool they've made some adjustments to the terrain rendering system and now writes the depth buff buffer and is starting to respond to lighting. And that's that's all sounding really good. Uh, I can't wait to play with it. I still need to do a tutorial on it. I've been holding it off because I know that they are constantly making updates, but I figure I can probably make updates of my own alongside theirs to kind of keep you guys informed with the new features and kind of keep you guys excited about what's going on with the engine. So let's take an update and look at O3D tanks. Uh, the user, I'm gonna butcher this name, but I'm just gonna call it Grin. <laughs> Call, uh, the person grin has now made it available for windows as well so if you guys remember o3 tanks is a version manager for o3 de uh, which was first initially released for linux and now has made its way to windows it allows you to do things like download build and install engine versions from any git repository uh, check for engine updates and apply them automatically uh, you can build edit and run a project using its bound engine version or you can set a project to a specific engine version uh, so it's a very useful tool, and if you are one of those who don't, who do, who isn't really into messing with Git and using Git commands to update a repository for to use the engine, this is another outlet that you can use uh, made by someone from the community. So definitely check that out. Links for that will be in the description down below. So next up is the O3D Econ that starts Monday. I am recording this on the 10th of October, on the 11th. Uh, the O3D Econ starts. They have a virtual option as well as an in-person option. So definitely participate, support the community, make this something great, especially for the first time out. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of talks from different people in the industry, uh, also from the AWS team, the people working on the engine are gonna have talks about the engine in case you need a better understanding on certain systems. You're gonna be going in depth giving examples and just all an overall learning experience. Also going to have talks from other industry people, as well as third party supporters who are already already in the chat, like popcorn effects, uh, as an example. So definitely, if you want to be a part, if you want to uh, learn something new, if you just want to support the people, the engine itself, definitely check it out and participate and uh, watch the content. Next up, our O3DE Jam is fast approaching. It starts in seven days. It is the October 18th is when it starts. When we'll get our theme so that we can start working on it. It is a month long game jam. Being that the engine is very new, people are still getting acclimated to the engine. Uh, it's more feasible to have a 30, 30 day game jam to give you time to figure out the engine as well as your project. So I think that's a very good idea. I am very excited for it. If you guys want, the link in the description is down below for you guys to check it out to join up with the jam, to check out 
uh, just information on how, uh, what we're doing with the jam. There's going to be prizes. They say we'll have nice prizes and swag for participants. Uh, nothing's been listed yet, but everything else on there is for your viewing to figure out what's going on. As always, you guys can check out the GitHub for newer features going on with the engine. Some of notable uh, mention would be the time system API. So if you guys remember from uh, Lumberyard, uh, using the time scale in the console was one of the ways, I think the only way at the, at the time for us to manipulate the game time. But then there were things like the animation system that wasn't tied to it, that wasn't affected by it, at least the newer one, the emotion effects. Um, so it looks like they're actually putting more effort into ticking system. I'm sorry, the engine's tick handling. So yeah, that's something that you can definitely look into on the impactful changes uh, on the Discord uh, to get a better idea of what was changed and what was updated and having a better uh, grasp of the information given for those different changes. There's been some changes in the asset browser search view, and this comes from Ignacio uh, over at Amazon. And it says a new view has been added to the asset browser as well as the asset picker in order to display the asset browser entries in a more accessible way. It has the same functionality as the original asset browser view, uh, but it is more, and I'm looking, I'm definitely excited about this because the browser was kind of a pain to use uh, because of the way it's scrunched up on the side is the view, the uh, search view, sorry, the preview really wasn't notable to use because it was kind of hard. Unless you had like a widescreen monitor, then you're kind of okay, I guess, in that aspect. Another recent change is how they treat the entity uh, reference space. So you guys know inside of the viewport, you have parent, local, and world space. Before the change, the default was the parent space. Unless you were to use certain button presses like Alt to change the space when you pull NT into the viewport. Uh, but now they're changing the new default space to local. The shift modifier was still always switched to world space. And if you want to work in the parent space, it's possible to pin it using the viewport UI space options. If you guys want to check out more information about that, Tom has a GitHub post uh, that I will post in the description down below. And of course, as always, you guys want to check out all of the little itsy bitsy changes that they make with the engine. You can always go to the issues or the pull requests and check the ones that are closed or even checking what's open to see what's what is currently looking to get fixed. That's always afforded to you there. And I showed you guys how to go about searching that in previous videos. Uh, but yeah, uh, progress is definitely being made. I'm still excited for the engine. I'm looking forward to what's coming. Uh, but that's the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Episode four is, is done. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Please check out my coffee page if you guys want to support the channel. If you guys want to make requests to get to the top of the pile. If you guys want, you know, side products that I might do that are commented, might be in Lua and Script Canvas, and then eventually when I get back into the flow of it, uh, C++. So looking forward to just um, getting back into the flow and hoping that you guys are having a very good uh, time with the engine. Other than that, hope you guys are having a very dope day. Hope you guys are prospering in your projects. And until next time, keep developing.